Czech 2020 uh, Conference for Higher Education. And uh, starting off with track one this morning, we've got an excellent presentation from two K-State faculty members. Um, we've got Nancy Burgess and Angela Chauncey with us. Angela has over 20 years of uh, experience with higher education and uh, Nancy has four and a half years uh, with K-State. Uh, they'll be talking to us uh, about uh, giving us a brief overview, uh, covering some of the process improvement methodologies, uh, and they'll highlight how to analyze uh, processes and streamline work, taking advantage of improvement opportunities. Um, I'd just like to welcome you to uh, this presentation, and there will be a Q&A session following this. Uh, I encourage you to submit your questions uh, through the links and the channels provided, and uh, we'll have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes after the pre-recorded session to handle any questions that you may have. Without any further ado, I'd like to present uh, Nancy and Angela. Hello, and welcome to CHECK 2020 Conference. Our session today will be a 30-minute session and will be followed by question and answer. We will be talking to you about business process modeling or BPM and it's an activity of representing processes of an enterprise so that the current process may be analyzed, improved and automated. BPM is typically performed by business analysts or architects who provide expertise in modeling by subject matter experts and have a specialized knowledge of the process being modeled, or more commonly, a team comprised of both. Alternatively, process modeling can be pulled from event logs using process modeling tools. The importance of business process modeling is often to increase process speeds, reduce cycle times, to increase quality or reduce costs, such as labor, material, scrap, or capital cost. In practice, business management decisions are used to invest, are usually used to invest in process modeling is often motivated by the need to document requirements for a project. Um, We will provide an overview of process modeling, tools and techniques in this session. We'll, we'll cover K-State's six step approach to process improvement. And this team consists of two Kansas State business architects, Nancy Burgess and Angela Chauncey, who will highlight how to analyze process, how to streamline work and take advantage of improvement opportunities. I am Nancy Burgess. I currently work in the office of the registrar and I am a business architect. I've been working in the office of the registrar for four, over four years now. And two years ago, I was excited to embark on this new adventure as part of the business architect team. My education consists of a Bachelor of Science degree, and I'm currently working on my Master's of Science degree. I have various training. I've been to various training, and I've completed various training, on my latest being my Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt. My hobbies are a daily workout, running, planting flowers, gardening when I can find the time, and coin collecting. Hello, I'm Angela Chauncey, and I'm also a business architect at Kansas State University, like Nancy, and I work in information technology services. I'm currently in an IT position, and I've been at K-State for over 20 years holding several different types of positions in software programming and project management. I have a bachelor of science in computer science and my certifications 
are Lean Six Sigma, like Nancy, and working on my, completed my PMP certification. I'm currently working on my MBA and have interest in the business side of K-State, including serving on the business architecture team. One of my top Clifton strengths is analytical. I enjoy analyzing data and processes. I enjoy running just like Nancy and then time with my family and two dogs. Business architecture overview. Um, business architecture is a general description of a system. It identifies its purpose, vital functions, active elements, and critical processes. It defines the nature of the interaction among them, and it consists of a set of distinct but interrelated platforms creating a multidimensional system. We use um, the Open Group Architecture Framework, COGOF, and this framework for enterprise architecture uh, provides an approach for designing, planning, implementing, and governing of enterprise information to technology. TOGOF is a high-level approach to design. It's typically modeled at four levels within a business, and that would be business, application, data, and technology. We use the open group architecture framework for structure in our approach, and the framework Well, today we'll be covering it. Today's session will be at um, the business level of TOGOF and business architecture was introduced, the history of it, it was introduced in the 1980s. So it's a relatively new practice. It provides value by saving time, reducing costs and improving customer experience. It connects the why, what, and how, when, and who of an organization. We use why, what, how, when at our university, and we use the reference guide BizBoc. BizBoc, or the why is usually the mission and the strategy. The what is our capabilities. The how is processes, the when is business, when it's occurring within the business cycle, and the who are the contributors or customers that are participating with it. I'm, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we use BizBoc, and BizBoc is a reference guide, and it stands for Business Architecture body of knowledge or the guide to business architecture. This guide represents an organized body of knowledge, a set of disciplines, best, practice, best practices for business architects and other practitioners. This book helps define and create a common language for business architects and it helps optimize business operations. I'm going to cover some of the Kansas State University's approach to business architecture. So if you look on the right at the services, moving over to left down to the task level. So we want to develop a line of sight from the services to our K-State community down to the tasks of a contributor and our employees and staff at Kansas State. Also, we collect and document artifacts that describe each of these levels. So if you start on the right, a service is expressed through the website or a service catalog. Moving over to the left, the functions and processes describe those services and the artifacts we use to describe that include process diagrams and SIPOCs, which this session today is about. And then down to the detail level of the tasks an employee or staff does includes 
is in your position description and in standard operating procedures. We use all of these artifacts to describe and align the work at K-State. Also in K-State's approach to business architecture, it's a federated service. So we have a group of business architects that includes core team members from information technology services, registrar's office and human capital services. Business architecture also trains the business units during our projects and engagements. So they're able to maintain the documentation and continue our federated approach. The core team members of, on the business architecture team like Nancy and I, we maintain the repository, our standards and practices. In our projects and engagements, we use toll gates between each of these six steps in our six step process to get agreement and sign off with the, with the sponsor and stakeholders. And then we also use agile techniques and we time box meetings with, with a certain length of time and goals for the meeting and in order to stay agile. In the previous slides, we mentioned some of the resources we use at Kansas State, including BizBoc, TOGAF, and Agile Techniques. And I wanted to mention some other resources that we use in our practice, including Lean Six Sigma, Nancy and I both have certification in Lean Six Sigma and at our campus, our College of Business offers Lean Six Sigma classes to the K-State community and employees and staff. Some of our success stories um, over the years, we have had several. Uh, and artifacts were produced during these projects, which align with the slide. The impacts, some of the partners we were, we've worked with is, as Angela mentioned, human capital services. We re-engineered processes. The outcome was save time. And the out outputs were process lists, SIPOX, and process diagrams. With McCain Performing Arts, a new system was implemented to help increase online sales and create a problem state it, statement and critical to quality. Office of Research, a new system was implemented and best of breed process was created. They, we also did charters and process diagrams with strategic enrollment management a new system was implemented with reduced variations. The voice of the customer was heard and how they want to see things and process diagrams are also created. We also partnered with Education Abroad and prepared a new budget, budget model, communicated values of service, and we produced process lists with cost information. Currently, Angela and I are working on a project with Strategic Enrollment Management and the Office of the Registrar, various other offices, financial aid, and what we are doing is analyzing tuition and fee waivers, the processes that go along with that, and we hope to add this to our success list in 2020. In this and our six and these successes were completed using a six step process approach. First, we create a plan. Second, we document the current state of the process. Third, we analyze that current state and take some measurements. And then we design the future state. From there, we then create an implementation plan which may or may not include technology to implement this new process, then we continue to review and improve. The continue to review and improve is done at the office level or department level. And this is to always be able to create innovation and um,
our six step process is similar to the domaic process process excuse me and domaic is the acronym for define measure analyze improve and control it refers to a data-driven important cycle used for improving optimizing and stabilizing business practices and designs the domaic improvement cycle is the core tool used to drive Six Sigma projects. However, it is not exclusively Six Sigma and can you be used as a framework to improve applications. So step one in our six step process includes creating a plan. In order to create a plan, we first want to gather that voice of the customer, understand their problem they're trying to solve and work with them. Next, we're going to gather the who and the what of their business unit by researching their website and their position descriptions. Then at the first meeting, we are going to gather that scope, our milestones, and make an agreement and an engagement plan in order to create that win-win situation. In order to move on to the next step, documenting our current state, the engagement plan will include our scope, milestones, and agreement of what we're going to document and improve. So now that we have that engagement step and create a plan, we can move to step two, document the current state. Documenting the current state. And after we have the plan and scope, we start documenting. And we use tools, and the tools used to create the current state process are SIPOX, process diagrams, which show the flow, redundancy, and measurements. At Kansas State University, we use Bizagi and Visio for our process diagramming, and we use Excel for our SIPOCing. We also use business process management notation to create a common language in all of our work. We try to capture any legal or regulatory steps, PPM policies, collect data about the process, frequency, wait times between steps, and the technology used to complete this process. From there, when we create process diagrams in the current state, um, they are vis visualizations of any sort of step-by-step -step process, and they create, they're usually created as flow charts with shapes that represent steps in the process, connected with arrows that indicate the next step. It captures the flow of the process, any actors or customers, the activities or tasks performed, the decisions that are made or should be made, maybe future state items. This is an example of a cab booking process diagram. And this diagram includes swim lanes. So one of the swim lane is the customer and we have another swim lane of a travel agent, and we have a third swim lane of the cab driver. It shows the tasks, how they're performed, and the order that they're completed. It shows decisions, how people receive information, and what the next steps are. It also can contain um, timers, and we can set stop and ends to the process. So here's your stop and end. Um, this is what happens when the assignment is completed. This is what a timer looks like. It also shows lag time and efficiencies and um, how we can fix that.
So some of those notations that Nancy mentioned are in our business process model notation. So those symbols and our standards such as the decisions, the swim lanes, the messaging icons, they're all standards built within Visio. So if we, in our federated approach and on our federated team, if we all use the same Visio template with this type of notation, it's very easy to work together and share ownership of process diagrams. And then there are some workflow systems that will import directly BPMN notation and automate those steps in a process. So now that we've documented the current state, we're ready to move to step three, analyzing the current state. So in analyzing the current state, we are looking for things such as how many handoffs are happening, if there are any loops where it loops back to the beginning. We're looking for chains where several steps in a process may be able to automate. Those types of processes, Nancy's gonna show you in here very soon. So we'll learn more about that in this presentation. We're also looking at the customer interaction during this process, if the customer's receiving feedback during the process. We're looking at how much wait times there are. Nancy mentioned that in the cab diagram where the little timers are. We put timers on our diagram and how much time wait time is during in the process. We're also looking for bottlenecks such as several approvals, looking for, for those types of things in this process diagram. And then at the next level, we're looking at the root cause of of these situations. So we use different tools to analyze the root cause, such as the five whys technique, which is simply just asking why five times to drill down to the cause. And then we also use fishbone diagrams to have a visual representation of the cause and the effect. And then we're also during analyze current state, we're also looking at, at different data inputs, such as reports that are produced during the process and other inputs and outputs we're analyzing to improve the process. So these are some examples of different types of um, how we would analyze the current state. So this first one is an example of a loop. And if you notice right here between E, F, G, and H, how it loops back around. And that's an inefficiency. Um, it, it can be a manual error or handling error when this loops around like this. So the second example is a chain. And a chain may be an opportunity to automate. And as you see, it's all within one department and it's being handed off to different individuals. Um, you can see that all most of those steps are all in one swim lane and that department or office has control to correct that system because it's all within one department. This third one is an example of ping-ponging or handoffs and um, Ping pong and handoff, as you see right here between C and D and E, it keeps bouncing back and forth between the two departments. What this causes is additional wait times, poor customer service, and maybe it should be reviewed that the department, one department does more of the steps before handing, handing it off back and forth to reduce wait time. Analyzing the current state, um, approvals can create bottlenecks in processes. And after a period of time, maybe they should just automatically pass through. An example of rework in a process is staff cleaning data and then handing it to another department or staff, and then they, they clean it again. Um, 
we analyze customer swim lane in the process and if they receive status updates during this process and you ask the customer what they're looking for what they would like to see happen and pain points within this process from there we go to step four designing the future state So we've analyzed that current state and now we're designing the future state. So we're looking at that current state analysis to develop some recommendations. We usually deliver a recommendations report and a 2B model of the process diagram and we cover that with our sponsors, our process owners and any stakeholders. We need to gather consensus from those process owners for those changes. We're trying to look for also for best practices and innovation in these processes. And then the processes that we select for redesign and re-engineering are those who, that are impactful, that really create that ROI, return on investment. And we select those for process re-engineering. And in that future state, we're looking for those things we analyzed in the current state. We're looking for those opportunities where we can reduce any unnecessary steps, take those extra steps out. Any parallel processing where two different departments can do something at the same time. Any batching, like Nancy mentioned, all those handoffs back and forth, maybe a, a department can do several tasks in a row before handing it off. We're looking at any shared services on our K-State campus that can be moved to our shared services department or shared between departments. And then we're also looking for that automation. We're looking to see if any technology can be used in the process to make it easier and faster. So now we're ready to move into step five since we've selected that and develop that future state, now we're ready to implement. So we develop an implementation plan next. When we develop an implementation plan, um, it shows how a process will evolve at a high level. When properly developed, an imp implementation plan ensures that the development team are working to deliver works and they're trying to um, meet the customer's needs. It may include other plans such as training and communication. So what we are, we um, add that aspect in there. We also try to create um, business continuity and we encourage empowerment of staff to change. We move from there, from the implementation plan and to step six. And this is where we continuously look for improvements. So what we do when we continuously look for improvements, we encourage the business unit to continue this, the business process tools and strategies that we have taught them. Um, we encourage them to be proactive and monitor their outcomes and processes and to adjust as necessary, clean up and repeat and continue to improve. And as they do this, they look for innovation, they look for um, improvements and they look for um, better methods. They also, we also um, include for the continuous improvements is to share success stories within our K-State University community. And what that does when we share success stories, we are encouraging innovation, um, continuity, and we are highlighting a way or a better process and somebody might have not ever considered. So in closing today, I hope you've enjoyed 
our session at Check 2020, and we just wanted to cover the what, the why, and outcomes. So the what today includes our six-step process for business process improvement using tools and strategies, and the why is for continuous improvement for your institution, and the outcome of these six-step processes to introduce in efficiencies, transparencies, and transformation. We'd like to leave you today with our email addresses, so you may contact us at any time. These are our case state emails, and we'd be happy to talk with you more, and we'll also be online after this session for Q&A. Also, if you found our and Angela for that wonderful presentation. Uh, we do have a question from the audience and um, I, I think you kind of touched on this near the end there, but uh, you'd showcased a process visualization uh, using Visio. Are there any other programs that might accomplish the same task? Um, currently we also use Bizagi and um, it is a freeware and we use it, our team uses it for simulations is what we use. Um, it's also, it, it graphically diagrams and documents and simulates processes very similar to Visio and it looks exactly the same. Okay. Well, thank you for that additional information. Um, that, that's really all we had uh, as far as questions came in. I think you gave a, a very in-depth and, and meaningful presentation. Uh, were there any other uh, pieces of information you wanted to uh, pass along? Any clarifications or is this uh, the end of the presentation? I think since we don't have any more questions, it's probably the would be a good point to stop. Okay, and actually, um, no, nope, we got a, a question right there at the end, but that's a, it's a follow on uh, very similar to the one that was just asked. So um, anyways, thank you both ladies for uh, this wonderful presentation and thank you for your time. To all those that in attendance, uh, thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the rest of our sessions. Until uh, we see you again, have a good day.